you get a MacBook, and you get a MacBook, and you get a MacBook by going to Apple's website or a third-party website and buying one, of course. What? What? I'm not charity here, but I will guide you through this process by letting you know what, in my opinion, is the best MacBook for most users. But no matter what Mac you end up getting, you're going to need to be able to view and edit PDFs, which is why you need to check out UPDF for the best PDF editor. Hey, I get it, everyone uses PDF, so you might be wondering, what makes UPDF such a great PDF editor? Well, UPDF is a streamlined PDF editor that is easy to use and understand, it's fast and efficient on Apple Silicon, and comes with all the features you need to view and edit documents, not only on your Mac, but also on your iPhone, iPad, and even Windows if that's your cup of tea. Every tool is easy to understand and accessible. So if you want to highlight the document, just select the highlighter and start highlighting away. If you want to underline text, just select the underline text tool. If you want to add text to the PDF document, just select the text tool and insert text anywhere. My favorite tool is the handy text callout feature, which gives you a text box with an arrow, which is great for pointing out errors or things you need further clarification on and edits you would like made on the document. UPDF also makes PDF editing kind of fun. There's a lot of custom stickers and stamps and they really add some personality to otherwise boring documents. UPDF may look like a simple and streamlined PDF editor, but don't be fooled by its simplicity. It also has access to super powerful tools like an AI powered OCR reader, which lets you scan documents and images and automatically convert those to easily searchable and editable PDFs with support for up to 38 languages. To learn more, check out the link in the description for a special discount. And thank you to UPDF for helping me edit my PDFs and also for sponsoring today's video. Okay, now we all know that Apple has a very extensive MacBook lineup, which is why when you're discussing the best MacBook for most users, we do have to disqualify some MacBooks right from the starting choice. So I think those are namely the higher end versions of the MacBook Pro, which can quickly start to outprice themselves in the normal range for most consumers, which is why even though the 16 inch MacBook Pro is currently the only like big laptop that Apple offers, I think it has to be excluded from this list for just how expensive it is. Now there's not gonna be like a scoring system to this video. It wouldn't make sense, right? Because obviously a more expensive laptop is going to win in multiple areas like performance, display, speakers. And there's really only a few categories like value or battery life where the lower end laptops would kind of rack up points. No, this video is about finding the best MacBook for most people today, and that does require some nuance, but rest assured, I will ultimately pick a winner by the end of this video. Therefore, let's take a look at the default choice, the M1 MacBook Air. Now, it may not look the newest and it may not be running the latest chip, but after more than 607 days on the market, the M1 MacBook Air is still being sold by Apple, and for good reason. It just works. The M1 MacBook Air is the cheapest option in Apple's lineup, being sold at $999 on Apple's website. However, because you're watching my video and I'm your friend, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Come here, come here. Don't pay full price. Yeah, because this MacBook has been on the market for a while and it's readily available on third-party retailers, you can often find this M1 MacBook Air on sale for at least $100 off Apple's normal asking price. Even Apple themselves usually sell a refurbished version of the M1 Air that is practically new for $849 on their refurbished storefront. And if you're a student, you can always get $100 off this M1 MacBook Air and frankly, every other Apple laptop we're going to be talking about in today's video on Apple. Apple's educational website, so make sure you don't pay full price for these laptops. So with a usual asking price of around, let's say, $900 for most retailers, the M1 MacBook Air is an absolute steal today, and it has aged amazingly well. This is literally Apple's first Apple Silicon-based product, and the M1 chip's performance still holds its own even against Apple's latest M2 chip. Day-to-day -day tasks like browsing the web, watching videos, word processing, email, Excel, spreadsheets, and other lighter tasks are going to feel just as fast and responsive on this M1 MacBook Air compared to even Apple's most expensive desktop computers. Even better, the M1 Air even holds its own in lighter video or photo editing workloads, and it's perfectly capable of editing a few streams of 4K video and it's even snappy for things like developer workflows. So it makes a great choice for starting out with really any of these laptops. And it's particularly a great laptop for students and anyone who needs a lightweight laptop that can last on battery power 
all day long. The M1 Air is only 0.1 pounds heavier than Apple's latest laptop, the M2 MacBook Air, and both laptops have the same exact battery and outstanding 18 hours of all day battery life. It comes with an excellent trackpad, Apple's Magic Keyboard, which is now standard across all of their laptops, and still features a premium design that is made out of durable aluminum. Are there downsides to the M1 Air? Sure, I think the most notable one has to be that it's an older design, so that's definitely going to irk some people. It's just not as lustworthy as Apple's latest laptops, and it only has two Thunderbolt USB-C ports, so using an adapter or a dongle is probably going to be a necessity, and any of these M1 or M2 chips, the base level chips, can really only natively support one external display on Apple's laptops. Now, from the M1 Air, there are two possible upgrade paths that are going to bring you to a very similar price point, and strangely enough, I think both of them have their merits. Now, the most obvious upgrade path is the one you're probably thinking of, the M2 MacBook Air, which is a revised version of the M1 MacBook Air. Everything great I said about the M1 MacBook Air basically applies to this M2 MacBook Air, but with some few noticeable upgrades that are pretty apparent. So first of all, the main reason why you should go for an M2 MacBook Air over the M1 MacBook Air isn't even the M2 chip, which yes, it is slightly faster than the M1, but not really in a super noticeable way. No, you'll actually want to upgrade to the M2 MacBook Air for the new design. This is one of Apple's best looking laptops ever and features a uniform ultra thin design in its lightest weight body that Apple currently sells. Open up the air and you'll find a modern screen design with minimized bezels around the display to pack in a bigger 13.6 inch display into the same area as the 13.3 inch display found on the M1 Air. The display itself is also a little better, like it's slightly brighter at 500 nits of max brightness, making it ideal for outdoor use or next to like really bright windows. The M2 Air also offers a convenient dedicated MagSafe charging port, which does free up the two additional USB-C ports for data connections. Now, although this M2 MacBook Air has a lot of nice things added to it, it does carry a hefty price increase over the M1 Air. Although nearly one year after release, it is possible to find this M2 MacBook Air for a reduced price point. Currently on Amazon, it's for $1,049. And yeah, that's actually a pretty good price point for this laptop, but for its base level price point and what Apple sells it at, you are looking at $1,200, which does make it kind of expensive for a starting entry level laptop. And believe it or not, it may actually end up being slower than the M1 Air for some tasks on the 256 gigabyte base model. And that's because of Apple's decision to use a single SSD drive on the 256 gigabyte models for the M2 Air compared to the two 128 gigabyte drives that you would find on the M1 Air. Now, I won't bog you down in the details, just know that the read and write speeds on the M1 Air are faster on the base model. And if you're buying the base model with eight gigabytes of memory, which is probably gonna be most people, there's a good chance that if you're using a lot of memory and you have to swap to virtual memory, well, the M1 Air might just be slightly more responsive than the M2 Air for higher memory workloads. Furthermore, that M2 chip, even though it is more powerful for sustained workloads like editing video and exporting it, you won't really notice huge gains on the M2 Air over the M1 Air because both laptops need to thermal throttle to cool these chips due to the lack of a physical fan in both of the laptops. To put it simply, for most users, there's just not enough exclusive hardware benefits or performance value to make the M2 Air worth it over the M1 Air. Now, let me rewind back a bit, because remember when I said that there were two upgrade paths? Well, there is a more unconventional upgrade path, and that might be to purchase the regular old M2 MacBook Pro. Listen, listen, just hear me out. Yes, this model was a disappointment as soon as it was announced. It had the same old design as the M1 MacBook Pro, no MagSafe charging port, and it still came with the touch bar at $100 more for the base model than the sleek new M2 MacBook Air. And for most users, I would say the obvious option is to skip this laptop. However, and it does pain me to say this, there's a very small audience segment that might want to pick this up for the practical performance benefits. The M2 MacBook Pro does have a fan in it, meaning it can properly cool off the M2 chip for sustained workloads that, granted, most users probably won't be taking advantage of. However, if you're on a budget and you want a video editing machine, you want uh, lower development times, or you plan to use the GPU, which does tend to produce more heat than the CPU on Apple Silicon, 
The M2 MacBook Pro may not look pretty, but it's still the more practical choice when it comes to a pure performance value over the M2 Air. Now, another thing I think most reviewers and users forgot about this machine too, is that it is excellent for battery life as well. And because this Mac really isn't desired all that much, you can actually find this pretty consistently on a discount. So as of the making of this video, it's $1,099 on Amazon, which seems fair given its dated design. So while it may get a lot of points knocked off for the legacy design, uh, from a practical standpoint, this MacBook might actually be a better choice over the M2 Air if you don't care about aesthetics and you just care about performance and battery life. It's kind of hard to knock it. I mean, it's easy to knock it, but if you really think about it logically, it's a solid choice. Okay, what about the highest end? The cream of the crop, the 14 inch M2 MacBook Pro. The newest laptop in Apple's lineup. Well, while I don't think this laptop fits into the needs of most users, considering it's going to be overkill for the vast majority of people watching this video, it is the best laptop choice for users that need to work with professional programs like Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, Photoshop, Logic, Xcode, and yeah, you get the point. Basically, if you need a fast CPU and fast GPU performance for sustained workloads, these MacBook Pros are going to be faster for more demanding tasks. This laptop not only is much faster thanks to the base M2 Pro chip, which basically matches the performance of the highest end M1 Pro chip from before, but it also comes with better baseline specs that higher demanding users will need out of the gate, like higher storage and more memory on the base model. And it also has a lot of nice quality of life updates, like more ports with three Thunderbolt USB-C ports, a dedicated MagSafe charging port, an HDMI port, and an SD card slot, which is very, very helpful for importing photos and videos directly into the machine. Unlike the M1 and M2 machines, it can also natively support two external displays, while those machines, of course, can only support one. And it also comes with a plethora of upgrades that pros and consumers alike will appreciate, like the beautiful mini LED display capable of HDR video playback, and also a super smooth 120 Hertz ProMotion refresh rate, paired together with excellent speakers that can actually fill a room with sound and sound better than most monitor speakers. Frankly, there's not many downsides to these machines compared to the base level M1 and M2 laptops. I guess the biggest downside you can give it is it probably won't be as good on bad battery life with its weaker 17 hour battery life rating, and it will be even lower when using power demanding tasks. And it is heavier and bulkier than the base level laptops. It weighs 3.5 pounds, but the biggest weakness for this laptop is a very obvious one. Without a sale, you're looking at $2,000 for the base model, and you could basically buy two M1 MacBook Airs for the same price point as just one of these machines. However, I may have another secret for you. Come here. Now, this is wholly dependent on these products being available as the making of this video, but it is possible to find not only these M2 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pros for sale, but you can also still find the M1 Pro versions of these laptops at a deep, deep, deep discount. Just quickly browsing on sites like Best Buy, I can still see these uh, MacBooks readily available for sale uh, for the higher end versions of them, bringing them down to the base level price points. But uh, if you're looking to get like a renewed or a refurbished one, I found it for like 1500 on Amazon and even on Apple's own refurbished store, which is way better and way more trusted than Amazon. Uh, you can find these base level M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pros for just $1,529. Making it the obvious choice for pro users on a budget or even normal users that just want a better entertainment laptop with more ports, honestly, it's a really good deal. It kind of makes the other laptops look bad in comparison. But uh, listen, these are prone to sell out quickly and you may not get the exact configuration you were looking for, which is why it ultimately brings me back to the question I asked at the start of this video. What is the best MacBook for most users? And to fit that criteria, I think it needs to be more hassle-free and readily available. It also needs to be speedy. It needs to be lightweight. It needs to be reliable. It needs to have the features that users want, and it needs to be at the lowest price point possible. And for most users, the M1 MacBook Air 
is still the best choice. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to admit it, even with all these new redesigns and new chips, but the M1 Air still holds its own as being the best valued MacBook for most users. There's just not enough of an advantage for most users going for these higher end MacBooks, and the M1 Air is still perfectly capable of handling everyday tasks with ease and even breaking the barrier at what we expect a low end MacBook to do. Plus, there's no ifs or buts and things like that when it comes to storage speed. It's a dead simple decision to make when upgrading, and you just pick out how much storage you need and how much memory you need without worrying about things like read and write speeds. And because of that, it is without hesitation that I crowned the M1 MacBook Air the winner as the best MacBook for most users. Just like I crowned myself the best Apple tech YouTuber. Take that, snazzy. All right. If you like this video, you know what to do. Click the like button. And if you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to purchase any of these laptops that I mentioned in this video, of course, there'll be affiliate links in the description below. But more importantly, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. And I hope this video helped you out. I'll see you in the next one.